It was another year. Not just any other year. It was a very special year. It started out great as the Marching Knights placed seventh at State Fair with their rendition of Mickey Mouse. How could anyone forget... Couldn't hear Mrs. Leisure's voice echoing over the PA system. Good morning. May I have your attention for the morning announcements, please? Today is D Day. For lunch, we are having hamburger sandwich, crisp dill pickle, crinkle cut French fries, a fruit cup, chocolate brownie, and one half pint of milk. Will you please keep the ketchup and mustard on the sandwiches and not the floor? Everything increased. There were 1,250 students in a building that has a capacity of 1,200. Lunch prices rose from 40 to 50 cents. Or by skipping lunch, you could almost buy a gallon of gas so you could shop town. As always, sports were something special. Ian competitors were winners in nearly every sport. For example, the tennis team won the sectional in conference, and the Big Blue Pit hosted the Knights, who ended up with a 21-3 and record, including the sectional crown. The East Noble spirit grew as the Budweiser song became the thing. shortages, and one of these was a shortage of skirts. Not shorter skirts, fewer skirts. The trend was slacks, and the fuel shortage might have been one of the reasons, as the thermostats were frozen at 68 degrees. That wasn't all that was frozen. Many students wore their coats to school and in school. Along with the skirt shortage, there also came a clothes shortage. 
At the beginning of 74, streaking was the big thing. Some students did their own takeoff on streaking. Words like cruising and made in the shade took their place among the expressions decent and burnt as the old days were relived. American Graffiti, The Great Gatsby, and many other movies depicting the earlier 1900s were the craze as the 1970s reverted back and enjoyed the good old days. Speaking of oldies, remember all those familiar voices you heard throughout the building? They're the things you can't write about. You have to hear them to remember them for all they're worth. This roving reporter got this one from 20 feet away. Today we're going to talk about hyperbolas, which I'm sure all of you couldn't sleep much last night knowing that today we're going to talk about hyperbolas. I know myself, it gives me goosebumps inside just thinking about them. It's so exciting, it's tough to sleep, but we made it. And this is what we're all excited about. Now, if you look at this, this is a general form of a hyperbola. x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. We talk about parabolas. This is now hyperbola. So we'll find where a is the transverse axis, b is the conjugate axis. It's one of these things you have to look at this and ask yourself, so now how, how does this appear? How is it different from ellipses or hyperbolas and parabolas and so on and distinguish between the two? Anytime we have this type of equation where we have minus the difference equal to 1, this is going to be a hyperbola. And so this is what we're going to have to recognize. This is something, as you can see now, we take the square root of A, now get the transverse axis, the square root of B, now get the conjugate axis, and we get the asymptotes and the vertex and the foci and so on. You'll find what this does, this gives a very exciting appearance of what we're doing. It's stuff that you can smell your parents with. You take this home and show mom and dad, hey, they'll think you're smart. You know, they think you know some stuff that you really don't know. Or, you know, it could happen Saturday night, you fell, Saturday night, things aren't going too well. Just kind of whip this out, you know, you'll find this, get them all excited, and it works. You know, look what happened to me. It took 29 years, but it happened. It takes a loud voice to coach, and the guys are sure to hear Mr. Inniger. Speaking of coaches, remember all those announcements about girls' basketball? Finally going to happen. The girls are going to play their first basketball game tonight at 6.30 in the East Noble Gym. Come and find out the answers to those burning questions that you've been harboring in your mind, such as, can an English teacher really coach basketball? Or will it, and will it be the thrill and excitement of victory or the agony of defeat? Be there! The team soon found out that winning wasn't everything. But who can help but remember the strides they made? I recall when I was driving a bus uh, one night leaving the station, this was before the war when a lot of people were riding the buses. We had so many people standing that uh, anyone could take the fare for his trip out of someone else's pocket, and neither one of them would know the difference. That's really what you would call crowding. Mr. Jackson's classes didn't always stick to the business at hand. They enjoyed his easy manner, and many conversations cropped up during class. Besides the excitement of the daily classroom, the regular routine was broken by unexpected vacations. During April, classes were interrupted on five different occasions due to bomb threats. There was one complete day of vacation, one voluntary day, and three times when classes shifted to the parking lot. It was a real bomber. East Noble Theater presented a Broadway musical MAME, which added to their long list of successful hits. Almost ended the year with no announcements, but the problems were solved, and once again we heard that golden voice of the air. May I have your attention, please, for the afternoon announcements? Max Greer will be giving lessons tonight. Will the following students please report to the general office following these announcements? Colin Carter. This concludes the announcements. Mr. Martin, please call the office. And just for the record, it was a very good year.